Today, we are joined by author, marketer, artist, the genius behind theabundantartist.com. He's helped over 20,000 artists get paid. Corey Huff, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Mark. I appreciate it. Corey, it's absolutely my pleasure. All the After Hours entrepreneurs are very excited to hear how we can get paid because let's face it, we do not want to be starving artists anymore. We're over it. We're ready to get paid. <laughs> so I want to start on that topic, right? At the very, very beginning, you started The Abundant Artist to help people change their life, change their perspective, start getting paid for the brilliant art that they're creating. At what point did you realize that starving artist is a lie? When did that aha moment come for you? Yeah, I think it was a gradual realization over time. You know, I, I went to theater school, got a BFA in acting. A lot of my friends were performers and visual artists. And uh, as I started uh, meeting more people, I was fortunate enough to meet a handful of artists who were doing really well and uh, and still are doing really well. And it was really interesting to see the difference in their behavior, again, uh, versus some of the other artists that I knew. Right. And we all, I think most of us uh, know an artist who is brilliant, uh, has incredible talent, uh, has worked very hard to master their craft, but absolutely is either too afraid or refuses to promote themselves. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, it could be they don't have time or it could be they're too afraid or it could be they don't just don't know how. Uh, but that really was the difference between a lot of the artists that I know is that the ones that are really talented and the ones that are willing to promote themselves, uh, it made a big difference. Well, it's, it's kind of an odd combination of personalities, right? Typically, when I think of an artist, their skill is creativity and, and, and seeing the world in a different microscope. But business operators, they see things more analytically and logically, right? So how can we marry those two things behind? Is that something that you teach on, in your course? How, how can we do that? Yeah, there. I mean, I've written books about it. We've written a lot of blog posts about it. Uh, we do teach it in our courses. But I think it, when you talk about business operators being more analytically minded, I think that's certainly true for some business operators. But business isn't just about the numbers, right? Business right. is also about relationships. It's about uh, having something that's really great. Uh, if you have a product that sucks, uh, you can be the greatest analyst in the world and still not do a good, and it's going to be really tough to sell a crappy product. So uh, quite often I find that if an artist is able to just open up about their excitement, uh, open up about their enthusiasm for the thing that they do, and then they're able to uh, learn to build relationships with a few key people, uh, they can make a really great living from what they do. Really interesting. Really interesting. So you say create relationships, develop relationships with a few key people. Who are the types of people that we as creators should get to know with and combine forces with? Who are the type of people that we want to be connecting with? Yeah. I mean, for professional fine artists, uh, the people that I work with for the most part, uh, that's going to include art gallery owners. It's going to include, um, artists who are important within their niche, right? So if you're a wildlife artist, you're going to get to know a couple of the big wildlife artists in your world and do some collaborations with them, uh, learn how to run in their circles, learn where, where their work appears. Um, also building relationships with some of the companies that run the big online art galleries like art.com and uh, places like that. Mm -hmm. Get to know some of those people and you'll open up opportunities for yourself. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm all on board with that. I think who you know really makes the difference. And that's I think that's part of the magic of living in 2020 is you've got tons of ways to reach people. Right. So where is the best place to reach people? Does it depend on your exact niche, the specific niche? Like, because this, this is, this is always the challenge, right? You really want to focus in on your craft, honing your craft. You don't want to spend all your time DMing people, right? How can we, how can sure. we balance all of that? Yeah, I think for artists, there's a few key places. Uh, and as cliche as it might sound, uh, Instagram is really important yeah. for professional fine artists. Uh, it's not just because it's a visual medium. It's it's the place where a lot of professional artists hang out, and it's a lot of it's a place where a lot of uh, like very enthusiastic, very wealthy collectors spend time uh, browsing art. Right. Uh, so there's a a group of artists there that are very very prolific and very popular, and spending time on Instagram is a good way to get to know some of them, to build relationships with some of them. Uh, and then when you're talking about uh, 
you know, in, in a time when we're all sort of stuck at home, uh, Instagram becomes even more important. Uh, and then building relationships with people on uh, other social channels as well. Uh, Facebook, uh, other messenger, there's like messenger uh, groups, small messenger groups that are super influential and powerful. What about uh, TikTok? I'm curious. Any interest in TikTok? You see any uptick there? Uh, yeah. So so the TikTok, the artists who are getting into TikTok now are uh, you know, growing followers like crazy. The challenge with TikTok is the buying audience isn't really there yet, right? Uh, the the 40-year-olds with uh, money uh, are, are not really on the TikTok train yet, mm. uh, but give it 10 years and and that'll happen. Yeah, I, I, I could see that as a long play. And, and one of the things that I think really play well when you're using video or things like TikTok or the new Instagram Reels is kind of showing like before and after, like I think it would be a cool way of bringing people through the process, right? And speeding it up and playing with time lapse, that type of thing could be could be interesting, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what are some mm -hmm. other ways that you can make your art really stand out online? What are, what are some things that you found to be successful, Corey? Yeah, so the uh, in the retail world, they would call it merchandising, right? Where you, uh, you right now, you've got in your background a couple of paintings above your couch in your office. It's beautiful. And... Uh, really savvy artists will uh, put their art into those sort of stock photos of a living room with a couch and they put their art uh, over the couch. And you can put your art in all sorts of contexts, right? You can have your art hanging inside of a wealthy house. You can have your art uh, hanging above a couch or on a stairwell or, you know, all sorts of ways like that. Um, when I was in Australia a couple of years ago, I met Maggie McDonald and she uh, is a, she has a background in merchandising. And so she does some really cool things uh, where she will lay her art flat on the ground in her studio and take pictures of it. So there's like splatter paint all over the ground right oh. next to it and her feet are in the photo. So it's just, it, it's uh, something you don't expect, right? Just a straight on crop shot of a painting is a lot less interesting than seeing a painting in sort of the natural wild habitat of an artist. And uh, people really dig that. And they, she told me uh, that the paintings where she's got her feet, her toes sticking in, sticking up uh, in the photo are actually her best performing images. Clever, clever. And that's actually yeah. a really great point, I think, that you brought up, Corey, is that being unexpected, right? I actually had uh, Travis Chambers on the show uh, a few weeks ago. He creates... Uh, video ads for big companies on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Very, very successful. He said the number one thing you can do is be unexpected. And and, and so I think that's something that all creators should be considering, uh, whether you're doing fine art, whether you're creating videos, audio, although I'm not going to drop anything too unexpected on, on this show. Um, but yeah, I, I really like that. Hey, Mark here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Let YouTube know you're enjoying this video. Let me know you're enjoying this video. All right, let's get back into this episode. So I wanna talk a little bit about your prolific experience teaching people at theabundantartist.com. You've been doing this for over a decade, over 20,000 artists taught. That's that's a mind blowing number, Corey. Um, if, if you would look back 10 years and, and then look back would you have ever expected to have the success that you've had? Um, on the one hand, I want to say no, because you can't ever really see where things go. Sure. Uh, certainly 10 years ago, I had no idea what the abundant artist would become. Uh, and then on the other hand, you get involved in a project and it can sort of take on a life of its own and you can kind of see where it's going. And you say, you know, if I'm going to ride this train, uh, I know what that eventually looks like. But yeah, I think when you first get started, especially when you're young uh, and you don't have a lot of business experience, you don't know where it's going to go. You know, back before I started The Abundant Artist, when I was just early on in my career and just learning marketing, I was doing things like uh, I won a scholarship to a marketing conference uh, with Dave D, who's this big time copywriter, and I didn't have the money to go to the conference. I had a free ticket to the conference, but I couldn't afford to fly there and get a hotel room. So I like slept on somebody's floor in wow. the hotel uh, so that I could go. So you, you really don't know where things are going to go. I love that. I love a scrappy, like get it done. You knew it was an important place to go and you found a way to make it happen. Like, like that at the end of the day is what after hours entrepreneurs do, right? We might not have the resource, whether it's cash or time, but we find ways to make it happen and we get scrappy. So 
let's uh, let's again let's keep i want to keep going back in time a little bit a little bit ba back to the future here on the beginning of the abundant artist of course you can find everything that Corey's doing at the abundant artist.com uh, lots of resources there but what was the point where you kind of realized you know you said like things started to pick up but how did you realize that you were on to something when did you start getting that positive feedback because i find that to be one of the challenges especially when you're in a creative space or you're building something new is you want that persistence and that perseverance to keep going but you also need self-awareness mm -hmm. to know okay i need to get off of this track and move move so how did you navigate that yeah. So I had been running the Abundant Artist as a side project for a couple of years. Uh, I was working, I, I got a day job at a marketing agency mm -hmm. and uh, I had switched jobs from the agency to a software company and I was uh, kind of doing marketing there and running the Abundant Artist on the side. And uh, one day I, this is so funny, I woke up and uh, I checked my email, I checked my work email, I checked my personal, my, my other work email, my business email. And um, I had uh, another inquiry about uh, some coaching that somebody wanted me to do. And I had a panic attack because I was <laughs> so busy uh, running my side business as well as running my day job that I just felt like I couldn't take on any more projects. And I, I sort of felt trapped. And um, I called my wife and was like, I'm having a panic attack. I think I'm going to die. And uh, she talked me off the ledge and uh, at the metaphorical ledge. And uh, we decided that we would that I would quit my job a little early. Wow. And because we, we had already we already had an exit plan, right? Mm -hmm. We were sort of if, if it if we get to this revenue level, then we'll 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 make an exit plan to quit. And so it was a little earlier than we expected. But um, I was like, you know, if if thing, if opportunities keep prop, keep popping up, uh, then uh, we'll be okay. So I, I, the next day, I went into my boss's office and told him, and he was super supportive. And uh, so I, I, we had a nice gradual exit. Uh, I gave myself a two month exit from my job, and um, in that time period, I booked a webinar, a paid webinar. I was like, okay, we're going to do a just to give myself a little more extra cushion. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it, over the course of a month, I set up and sold a webinar and we had 500 people pay to, uh, attend this webinar that we put together. That's fantastic. And, oh, it was fantastic. That's amazing. Did you already have <laughs> yeah, like yeah, a, was, a media, a social media following? Were you already kind of like well-known in the space at that point? Um, I mean, there's, we're a very small niche, like people teaching professional fine artists how to sell their art on the internet mm -hmm. is a, is a pretty niche group of people. Um, we had probably around 3000 people on our mailing list at that point. And, uh, so it was, you know, those 500 people who signed up for our webinar came from that list. That's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Now, yeah. open rates now in, in 2020 are a lot lower than they have been historically. Was that a challenge for you in actually getting people to bite? How did you craft your webinar? Walk us through a little bit of that. You had 3,000 people. How did you make sure that you were serving them in the way they need to be served? Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you say open rates are worse now than they were back then. I think they're about the same. About the same. That's fair. Um, yeah. But it, but it, uh, it totally depends on your niche and what you're doing and uh, how you promote yourself. Um, the abundant artist has always been very uh, low hype, very low hype. Uh, so we, we don't do like um, we're going to change your life type marketing. Yeah. Uh, we're going to, we I'll say, you know, if you do, if you join our courses and you do the work and you, uh, stay consistent at it, then in three to five years, you'll have a pretty good career. That's, that's how we sell. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, we don't, we don't do the, uh, buy our course and you'll be a millionaire thing. Um, so we've always sold ourselves as an education organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, very early on, we, uh, the core, the core, our core course, our most popular course is called how to sell your art online. And, um, when we first started, putting it out, it was join our course and we'll show you how professional fine artists uh, learn how to sell their, or how they, how they sell their art online. We have case studies with professional fine artists. And um, if you do the work uh, and you uh, do the work for 30 days after the course is over, uh, then we guarantee that you'll make your first sale online. And if you don't make your first sale, I'll get on the phone with you and uh, figure out what went wrong, what didn't work. Like, so you have a guarantee uh, and, up front when someone signs mm -hmm. up. I like that. Yeah. 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 And if, uh, if, if I get on the phone, it's very, very rare 
that uh, that that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but every once in a while, somebody wouldn't 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 get a sale, and I'd get on the phone with them and help them figure it out. Uh, so it's not um, like a lot of people talk about hustle and scale and stuff. We built a pretty significant, pretty rad business just by treating people well and making realistic promises. Yeah. As Kevin Kelly says, it's all about getting that 1000 true fans that just really love what you do and being genuine. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges that we have as marketers in 2020 is it's just so hard to stand out and be genuine because like you said, everyone's always trying to scale. You're trying to stand out amongst all these people that are yelling, buy now, the list is ending, time's running out, don't miss out. You know, it, yeah. it's just, it's just a really hard thing. So if you're not, so, so don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. We still do, um, like we still tell people there's a deadline. Mm-hmm. Registration is going to end at this time. We, we do all of the, um, you know, the time-based marketing and the, sure. the scarcity and all that, all those sort of marketing basics. We just do it in a non-aggressive way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So are you doing um, a lot of outreach? Or are you waiting for people to come to you? I shouldn't say you use the term waiting. Are you putting the uh, the art out there that attracts people to you, so to speak? How are you actually driving mm-hmm. leads to your funnel, Corey? Uh, right now, most of our traffic comes from organic Google uh, searches. If you do a Google search for anything related to selling art online or artist websites, you'll find us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get, we get quite a bit of traffic uh, from that. Uh, and then we have, you know, we don't have a huge social media following. We've got like 15,000 people that follow us on uh, Instagram and another 30,000 that follow us on Facebook, but they're very engaged. Mm. Uh, they, they, they know when we post new content, they uh, share it with their friends. Every, every time we post something new, uh, it, it does pretty well. So people, people like us and they tell their friends about us. And at this point, um, we, you know, we've been around for 10 years, so there are people now who first found out about us when they were teenagers and just thinking about going to art school who have gone to art school, finished art school and, uh, are now ready to start selling their art. And so they look us up. Yeah. So, uh, you know, did, oh, you know, I guess some of the other things that we did, uh, in addition to our SEO rankings, uh, is, um, I spent, uh, most of 2014, 15 and 16, traveling quite a bit to do uh, guest lectures at various universities and uh, artist professional associations. Mm-hmm. So uh, that stuff super doesn't scale. Like flying to um, Richmond, Virginia to do a talk for 25 people, uh, a one-day a one workshop for 25 people, not a moneymaker, but what it does is it let, lets those 25 people in the room be have a great positive experience uh, and then they tell all their friends who are artists mm. about it. And a lot of those people will come out and join our online courses afterward. Do you think that builds up your, I guess, street cred in a way, right? It brings up, it builds your mm-hmm. credibility as you get these public speaking engagements. It does. Uh, but not, not because people see a logo on my website or see that I speak on my website. Mm. It's because I'm actually out talking to people yeah. and, and I'm a, like a real life person that they can touch. And, uh, you know, a lot of niches like art, um, they don't trust the internet, <laughs> right? Uh, they, they don't, they don't trust a, a person that they see on a website. They want to, uh, talk to somebody. They want to shake their hand. They want to be able to have a one-on-one conversation with them. And, uh, plus it's fun to do that, right? I'm an extrovert. I like getting out and meeting people. And that was part of the reason I wanted to do it is I don't like to just sit behind a computer screen. I, I want to actually get out and meet the people that I'm working with. Yeah, no, I think that's really powerful. And I, I don't, I'm kind of the same way. I've got a lot of artists, as you can see with my beautiful palm trees uh, over here on the right, uh, only on sale this evening for $9.99.99, hit me up. Um, I can only sell the one though, because one of them is my wife. I don't have the uh, the ownership rights to that one. But anyway, hit me up on that. Um, but a lot of people I think in the art artistic space are not necessarily extroverts. Uh, most of them are going to be introverts, I think, in general, which is why I think that the abundantartist.com is a really important place with lots of resources to help you sell your art. That's what you're doing. Cool. So let's talk a little bit more about the future of art, Corey, because to me, art has evolved and is continuously evolving, right? Um, and you're mainly sure. working with fine art paintings, right? Sculptures, I would assume that that mm-hmm. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but as creators, we've got all these different types of art starting to evolve. Is there anything that you're especially excited about or you think is especially marketable right now? 
Um, well, what I'm excited about and what's marketable aren't necessarily the same thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but one thing that I am pretty excited about is um, blockchain based art. And it's so this is everybody talks about Bitcoin and making money off Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that at all. But what I care about is uh, blockchain allows you to create a single piece of digital art, tie it to a blockchain, and you can actually take that piece of art and trade it or sell it. Uh, so there's some pretty cool companies like Artgnome that are uh, at sort of at the center of this movement of very technical young artists who are creating digital art that is uh, literally one of a kind. Uh, it can't be it can't be duplicated because of blockchain but it is completely digital. Right. So uh, there's some really, really cool things happening there. Um, I do see a lot of time-based art becoming very popular now. Uh, so time-based art is uh, events, right? Like you go into a, you go to a concert and there's like an installation at the concert and the installation goes away yeah. uh, after the concert and you never see it again. Um, Burning Man is a great example of that. Like the big, uh, the big Burning Man at Burning Man is uh, sort of the epitome of that. Like people throw all their hopes and dreams into that thing and then burn it so they can have that cleansing rebirth experience, right? Uh, like a lot of that stuff is super fascinating. Um, but the, uh, you know, when you talk about like what scales and what's sellable in art, like the, the classic like selling prints is still just such a huge moneymaker. Um, you know, I talk to artists fairly regularly who are doing 10 grand a month, uh, wow. selling fine, selling fine art prints. Um, you know, we had one, a guy who came through our program, uh, last year who he does, he, one of these people who he was a CPA and, uh, had wanted to go to art school, but his parents told him he couldn't. Uh, so he was painting on the side while he was doing CPA things. And, um, he started a, um, free plus shipping program for his prints and, uh, mm -hmm. he's killed it, uh, like literally like, uh, 50, $60,000 a month in, wow. in sales, in revenue. So where is he selling? Does he have um, like a, his website? He's doing e-commerce from his website? His, his website and Facebook. That's it. That's he's it. doing the whole thing with Facebook ads. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Good for him. Yeah, that's that's incredible. That's incredible. So I want to kind of take it back from the beginning. Of course, we're talking here with Corey Huff, theabundantartist.com, worked with over and taught over 20,000 artists how to monetize. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit, right? Let's say I'm an artist. Let's say I have this beautiful, let's just say hypothetically, I have a beautiful palm tree painting on my wall behind me that is up for sale. What are the first three steps I should take to actually sell this piece of fine art? Give me, give me the first three things that I should do. So the first thing I would tell you to do is make five more like it. Okay. Uh, so that, so that you have, so that you're working in a series, uh, because most people who are serious about buying art want to buy from artists who have established themselves, who can show that they have some skill so that the art will retain its value and be, be more valuable over the long term. Um, also th then the next thing that I would tell you to do is just start talking to family and friends and, uh, letting them know that you're going to sell your work. Uh, so Jolie Gillibo, a few years ago, she, uh, had just finished art school and was trying to figure out how to sell her work. So she decided, um, I'm going to tell all my family and friends that I'm going to paint one new painting a day. And it was just a little like uh, three inch by three inch painting. Right. Um, and she did a new one each day, took a picture of it, wrote a paragraph about it and sent it to the 10 people on her mailing list. And she did that for a hundred days. And by the end of a hundred days, she had a hundred people on her mailing list. She'd sold something like 94, 95 of the pieces and made, you know, a few hundred dollars. It wasn't profitable. It wasn't scalable, but she now had a hundred people on her mailing list who had bought something from her. Mm. And, uh, then she was able to leverage that into the next stage of her career. Um, so just talking to your family and friends and letting them know and being consistent about it, super, super powerful. Uh, and then the next thing I would do is uh, start looking for places to show your work in as many places as possible. Uh, Jesse Reno, who we had on our podcast a, few, a couple years ago, is probably the best example of this that I've seen. Um, so he was a, a mail carrier, right? He delivered the mail uh, while, uh, it, while when he wasn't painting. And he had an incentive for himself where he had to talk to 
10 people each week about having a show of his art somewhere. And this could be an art gallery, but it could also be a coffee shop, a abandoned industrial site somewhere, uh, just anywhere where he could put his art up and show it. Um, and he wasn't, he didn't allow himself to paint until he had spoken to 10 people that week. Hmm. So sometimes he talked to 10 people in a day and he'd spend the rest of the week painting after work. Sometimes he really struggled and he didn't talk to anybody and he didn't paint that week. Um, but that was his incentive. And now, uh, he travels all over the world teaching painting courses and, uh, his canvases sell for 10 grand. I, I absolutely love that. Setting up some framework, some discipline. It's as Yako says, uh, discipline equals freedom saying, Hey, I'm not painting until I speak to 10 people. I'm not going to create a new YouTube video until I speak to 10 people. I'm not going to, I, I see, that's really smart. That's a really smart tidbit. Thank you for sharing that, Corey. That is, that's really, really fantastic. So, yeah. so I have one more question for you here, Corey, before we get into the world famous rapid fire. So get prepared, get strapped in, uh, take your anti-nausea medication, whatever you need to do. But before we get into all of that, I got to know, uh, what is, what is next for what you're doing at the abundant You've done a lot authorship teaching every, all these, uh, different people, how to, uh, to monetize their art. What's next. What do you have on your horizon? Yeah, so we've been piloting uh, some small group coaching programs. Mm. Uh, so we've gone from, you know, we have a lot of courses. Uh, we do we do four or five uh, live courses a year. And uh, what we found is there's a real need for artists to uh, have a small group of people that they can work with to mastermind. Like group, a mastermind, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A cohort of people that they can be accountable to and get and help each other. Uh, so for the last year and a half, we've been piloting some group coaching programs. Uh, Sarah Guthrie, who's a professional fine artist based in Seattle, uh, she is actually a graduate of our programs. She's been painting for 20 years. Um, about four years ago, she came through our program, and now she's a full-time artist. And uh, she runs those programs, those groups for us. And uh, it's really awesome to see. Uh, we've got four groups running right now. Uh, and we are planning to uh, bring another one of our alumni in to start running those groups. Uh, so you'll see more of that uh, as, as things progress, as we're doing more of those kind of groups. I love that. I love that. I'm curious, yeah. do you have a history in masterminds? Have you been in masterminds in the past? How mm -hmm. you develop? Is that how you kind of develop your framework based on your experience? Yeah. So we, uh, I've, I've been in and out of various mastermind groups for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I find them super valuable, super helpful. And some of the best friends that I have in my life are people that have been in those mastermind groups with me. Um, how many of you typically so yeah, so, join at a time? I'm curious. Oh, no more than one. Uh, yeah. Um, I think there was, I think there was a time when I was in two, but, uh, one, um, and, and in fact, right now I'm not in one, uh, the one that I was in ended last year. Uh, but no more than one. I, I find the right one for me and this is not necessarily for everybody. The right one for me uh, is a, group, a, a small, intimate group of people who I can build trust with, uh, people that I actually want to hang out with, and uh, people who are smart and, and ambitious about their business. Uh, and it's hard to find a group like that. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. I mean, it, 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 and I think it takes time. But I, I think that probably the, the key one there is people that I actually want to hang out with because... If you don't want to hang out with them, you ain't going to show up. And you certainly ain't going to get any value. So I like that. Yeah. Awesome. Corey, we're, of course, speaking to Corey Huff, theabundantartist.com. If you want to monetize your art and your side project, you got to go over to theabundantartist.com. There are tons of absolutely free resources. If you want to take the next level, as you can tell, Corey has got you there as well. Look, Corey, rapid fire. You ready? Let's do it. Cool. Let's make it happen. Corey, what is a must-have subscription in your life right now? Netflix. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you could suggest one item that every business owner should have that costs less than 50 bucks, what would you recommend? A paper journal with no lines in it. No lines. Okay. I'm digging it. Yeah. I'm digging it. Uh, if you had 10 seconds with yourself 10 years ago, what would you say? You're going to make it. It's going to be okay. I like that. That is a very common answer. I like that answer a lot. That's a good one. Uh, if you woke up in the morning, there was only one task, one business related task you could do, Corey, what would you do? I would email my audience and ask them a question. I dig it. Engagement. And then finally, last but not least, if you had a billboard message that could reach millions, millions, millions of people, Corey, what are you gonna put on your billboard? Be kind to yourself and others. Everybody, you know, you don't know what people are going through right now. Mm, mm. 
could, could use a little bit more of that. Corey, thank you so much, brother. That was great. You bet. Thanks for having me, Mark. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you enjoyed this episode. I've got several other episodes right here for you. Smash one of these videos to make sure that you don't miss out on the tips, tools, and tactics of industry experts. Let's take that side hustle full time. Smash one of these links.